600 years, the city's volcanic field is coming to life. Ironically, it's an absolutely stunning evening here in Auckland, the kind of evening when everyone would normally be heading out to the beaches. Instead, we are waiting, not sure what to do next, not sure if this volcanic threat is real or not. Uh, we came last night, actually, when the earthquake started. We're going over to my sister's place in Henderson, and you guess it's probably reasonably safe over there. Trying not to panic. But I think this morning I just wanted to wake up and it was all a bad dream, but unfortunately. By 8 o'clock this morning, the roads out of the evacuation zone were gridlocked. Bloody ridiculous. We're supposed to be fleeing for our lives, and the traffic hasn't moved for 15 minutes. Despite instructions from civil defence authorities, many people outside the primary evacuation zone joined the exodus, increasing congestion. We're asking residents outside the red zone to stay in their homes until further notice. Soldiers from Papakura military camp joined forces with civil defence staff and police. Going door to door to make sure no one had been left behind, they also patrolled shopping centres to prevent looting. By mid afternoon, the evacuated suburbs were ghost towns and the normally congested roads were empty. Throughout the afternoon, the earthquakes which set off the evacuation gradually became less frequent, but tonight the city is still on a level 3 alert. With me in the studio now, I have Colin Wilson, Professor of Volcanology at Auckland University. Professor Wilson, let's take the last point there first. We haven't felt any more earthquakes since early this afternoon. Could it be that the threat is receding? No, absolutely not. Um, we see no sign in any of the signals that we have, the earthquakes rising towards the surface, the deformation of the crust all suggests that the eruption is in. So you don't believe the authorities overreacted with the mass evacuation? No. Um, the size and style of the eruption is very difficult to predict. It's very difficult to evacuate once the eruption has started. So evacuating in due time and due course is very sensible. We just received reports of dead fish and discovered water being seen by our helicopter crew flying over the harbour. Is that likely to be connected with all of this? Very much so. That's probably a sign the magma of the molten rock is now pretty much at the surface. So assuming there is an eruption, what are we likely to see? Uh, the very first phase is, um, um, see. can generate what's called a base surge, a laterally moving cloud of ash and steam, and that is the biggest risk from the initial part of the eruption. Uh, as the magma meets the water, hot rock meets cold water, you get explosive eruptions. Can people escape from them? Like no. how fast do they travel? The, the ones that have been observed in historic eruptions can travel up to about 150 kilometers an hour. So once they've started appearing and started moving, there is no escape. Professor Wilson, I'll just stop you there. We're going to go live now to our camera at Sky City. Just a few moments ago, this cloud of steam started to rise up out of the water between Mission Bay and North Head. Professor Wilson? The, the eruption has started. <laughs> Damage to property. 
minimising the risk of destruction due to a natural disaster, such as a volcanic eruption, is a matter of being prepared. It's vitally important you know what to do when a disaster strikes and how to cope afterwards. If you want to learn more about safeguarding yourself and your family, please take an information pamphlet as you leave the volcanoes gallery. Is that all?